Okay, today I'm going to talk about one of the two primary proteins. Well, I said I'm going to talk about, but actually I have a guest lecturer today. Right here, this is Bruno the Bodyguard. He's going to tell you all you need to know about casein, which is one of two major proteins that are found in milk. And casein has a couple of unique properties, which I think could be of interest to anybody involved in bodybuilding or fitness. So go ahead, Bruno. Go ahead and tell them about casein. Go ahead. Look into the camera. Go ahead. Tell them what you told me. Go ahead. Bruno, come on. Tell them, you know, tell them about how casein is composes 82% of milk protein and, and uh, weigh, what was it, 18% of milk protein, Bruno? Okay. All right. Anyway, uh, that's it. Basically, um, you know, he doesn't want to talk. He See, Bruno doesn't talk unless he gets paid, unlike me. So I guess he just doesn't want to talk. Anyway, uh, casein, uh, of course, is 82% of the milk protein is casein and 18% of is whey. Uh, ca uh, casein actually came into prom. Oh, he wants to go. Okay, Bruno, go ahead. Uh, casein came into pro uh, prominence um, a couple of years ago in the late 90s. There was a studies uh, published by a guy named Yves Boré from France, and he looked at the various uh, digestive properties of milk proteins, especially whey compared to casein, and he found that each of them has unique absorption properties in the sense that whey is a very rapidly absorbed protein that peaks in the blood about an hour after ingestion, and it lasts for about 90 minutes. On the other hand, casein is a slowly digested protein that uh, when you ingest it, it actually curdles in your stomach. If you want to know what casein looks like, look at cottage cheese. That's basically what casein looks like when it gets in the stomach. Uh, cottage cheese itself uh, has a large percentage of casein, by the way. Uh, casein uh, curdles in the stomach, uh, and the reason it curdles in the stomach is because casein is actually compl naturally complexed with the mineral phosphorus and also calcium. That plus the presence of a substance called caseomorphine, which is basically a natural painkiller uh, similar to morphine. Uh, it's, a produ it's actually a bioactive peptide found in casein, but the combination of caseomorphine and um, and the natural phosphorus content of casein, this is what causes casein to curdle in the stomach and slowly release its amino acid content over a seven-hour period. Uh, so uh, that that the uh, so what the uh, Bori study concluded, and this is like in the late late nineties, was that because of its rapid absorption, whey is the superior protein for promoting muscle protein synthesis because it provides a rapid supply of essential amino acids, which are the cornerstone of muscle protein synthesis, whereas casein is uh, less involved with uh, immediate muscle protein synthesis, but rather because of the slow trickle of amino acids into the blood over a seven-hour period, uh, provides a sort of anti-catabolic effect because uh, of the slow release of amino acids will help to minimize muscle protein breakdown. So when you think about it, uh, milk more or less is a perfect protein because it contains uh, uh, an active muscle protein synthesis uh, fraction called whey, and it also contains a time-release anti-catabolic fraction, which is casein. Uh, now, because of this study, uh, dozens of articles came out in the bodybuilding magazines, and they probably still appear on YouTube, where, they t where people say to have whey uh, is the type of protein you should have right after you work out because um, it promotes muscle protein synthesis rapidly. However, in the last couple of years, they found out that muscle protein synthesis actually occurs over a 24 to 48 hour period. So the notion that you should take a protein drink containing whey as soon as possible after the workout isn't really true because, um, you know, as long as you get enough amino acids, in the 24 to 48 48 hour period following weight training you will uh, you will promote maximal muscle protein synthesis and the amount of uh, protein to get per meal is 0 0.4 grams per kilogram of body weight it comes out to about 30 to 40 grams of protein per meal uh, but that's another story 
Uh, now, there's been a cu couple of controversies about casein. Um, uh, there was a book uh, or a study, actually it was a book uh, uh, based on a study called the China Study. This was uh, supervised by a former professor of nutrition at Cornell University named T. Colin Campbell. And he made a kind of a very outrageous statement in the course of the study. Uh, he, he claimed that casein uh, is a carcinogen. In other words, it causes cancer. And what he based this on was providing uh, a very, uh, let's say, uh, uh, a very, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, uh, uh, processed form of casein. He provided it to rats, and the rats develop what they call aberrant crypts, foci, uh, which are the uh, precursor for colon cancer. So based on that, he uh, came to this broad statement that not only casein, but most animal proteins are actually carcinogens. Therefore, humans should only eat plant foods. Now, the problem with that uh, that statement is, first of all, uh, the, uh, the, the rats are much more prone to getting this particular precursor of colon cancer. That's the first thing. And the second thing is that what he didn't say was uh, giving uh, casein uh, to most of the rats that got casein, the casein actually had a preventive effect against cancer. And numerous other studies have shown that whey and casein and milk protein in general has anti-cancer uh, effects rather than promoting cancer. So, you know, the whole notion of that casein uh, is a carcinogen is complete nonsense. And you also have to look at the fact that the type of casein used in the China study was a very unnatural form of casein that's not likely to be consumed by humans anyway. Uh, now, uh, a couple of tips about case, uh, casein. Casein, of course, is available in, in protein supplements. Of course, it's available in regular milk also. Uh, but if you if you decide to use a, uh, a, a protein supplement, you want to avoid the cheap forms of uh, highly processed forms of casein, such as sodium and cal calcium cas casinate. These things are highly processed. They don't include the bioactive peptides that are found naturally in casein. So they're basically kind of junky forms of casein. The type of casein you want to use is called micellar casein. Micellar casein is the, is the natural casein that's found in milk. Now there's even controversy with that because some people suggest that micellar, pro micellar casein is also processed and too processed to be of any use. They suggest uh, a type of micellar casein called whole milk micellar casein. Uh, I'm not familiar about who sells this particular type of casein, but what I do know is that there's no research to prove that contention that micellar casein is overprocessed. I think micellar casein is the way to go, and uh, that's, the, that's the type of casein you want to use. Uh, I, I, I also think that... Um, that the uh, casein is best used, it has a couple of advantage over whey, and uh, again, because it's a time-release protein where the amino acids are released over a period of seven hours, it means that casein is particularly good to take at night. In fact, there were some studies uh, published a couple of years ago. The first study involved young younger bodybuilders who were given 30 grams of casein before sleep and uh, they're, they're the extent of uh, some of these amino acids in the casein were, radioactive, were radioactively labeled so they can show how they were incorporated into muscle. Well, the bottom line of the study was that the bodybuilders who took 30 grams of casein compared to bodybuilders who took nothing before going to sleep, the casein group showed a greater increase in muscle protein synthesis. So in that sense, casein was anabolic. Uh, they later replicated the study, but this time they use older subjects, and that's significant because uh, when you're over 40, there's a condition that starts to ensue called anabolic resistance, where basically your muscles don't absorb amino acids as efficiently as they do when you're younger. So because of that, the uh, older men, the men over 40 in the second study, were given a 40 grams of casein rather than 30 and, the, and uh, they also uh, showed, the results of the study showed that they, they definitely showed increased muscle protein synthesis. In fact, they showed 22% increased muscle protein synthesis over another group of men who, over 40 who did not take casein. Now, you have to understand something that 
The key to this nighttime casein effect is that you have to do an evening workout. In other words, the casein works through the uh, kind of synergistic with the workout. Uh, all of these, the, both of these studies, which showed a anabolic effect of ingesting casein at night, involved the subjects engaging in a workout about two hours before they went to sleep. Uh, I, I'm not really sure if casein would have the same effect if you didn't work out, but the authors of these studies suggest that the working out greatly aids the anabolic effect because, let's face it, when you're working out, you're tearing down muscle tissue, and uh, the casein will be much more efficiently absorbed and used if there's a need for it, which is you know basically to help replenish the uh, or repair the broken down uh, the broken or degraded muscle fibers. Uh, so uh, now, as far as uh, the essential amino acids, now whey is a little bit superior to casein in terms of essential amino acids. And you should know that it's essential amino acids that actually stimulate muscle protein synthesis. There's, there's uh, uh, eight or nine essential amino acids, depending on which textbook you read. Uh, and only the essential amino acids are actually responsible for increased muscle protein synthesis. doesn't mean that the other amino acids, so, the so-called unessential amino acids, it doesn't mean that they're not important. It's just that they're not really required for muscle protein synthesis. And what you need is you only need 10 grams of essential amino acids after a workout to maximize muscle protein synthesis. And you would get 10 grams of essential amino acids if you ingested about 20 to 25 grams of whey protein. Uh, one difference between whey protein and casein is in the amount of leucine. Leucine is a branch chain amino acids, one of three branch chain amino acids. And leucine, of all the amino acids, leucine is the key amino acid for, for promoting muscle protein synthesis. And it turns out that casein contains 8% leucine, whereas whey contains 11% leucine. It's not a great difference, but even that amount makes a little bit of a difference as far uh, as uh, muscle protein synthesis. Now, a couple of years ago, they decided to test the uh, effects of, of, uh, of uh, casein versus whey in promoting muscle protein synthesis, but they, they, they manipulated the study because they knew that casein is very slowly absorbed, and since the key uh, uh, behind whey's stimulation of muscle protein synthesis was the rapid absorption, they decided to even the playing field by providing a hydrolyzed or a kind of pre-digested form of casein compared to whey. And they gave several servings a day. What they found is that if you give the uh, uh, same servings of whey, uh, of casein, of hydrolyzed casein, if you give it at regular, the same regular interviews that you ingest whey, the, uh, the, the effect on protein synthesis is exactly the same. In other words, uh, whey and casein provide the same level of muscle protein synthesis if the, if the uh, casein is provided in a hydrolyzed or pre-digested form. But if, in case you're thinking about using this type of uh, casein, and again, I don't even know whether hydrolyzed casein supplements exist, but if they do, you don't want to bother with that because it tastes absolutely awful. I mean, god-awful. So there's no amount of flavoring that could disguise the taste. So I would say to stick with uh, with uh, uh, regular casein. The only problem with casein that I know of is casein is not very soluble in liquid. So you know sometimes um, if you get a lower quality casein supplement and you mix it up in a blender, it'll almost become like rubber. Uh, in fact, uh, I remember uh, when I was a kid, I sent for a uh, protein supplement that was advertised uh, in the magazines by a world champion powerlifter whose name I won't mention. I don't want to embarrass the guy. I, I think he passed away, but I don't want to embarrass him anyway. Anyway, he sold his own protein powder, which happened to be pure casein. Unfortunately, it was not micellar casein. It was a very cheap form of casein. I don't remember. This is like 50 years ago, so I don't remember exactly what type of casein. I know it wasn't micellar, but I do remember that when I mixed it in my blender, uh, it became like rubber. In other words, you couldn't even dig it out with a spoon. And uh, this kind of also explains why casein is also used in the manufacture of glue, and it's also used in the manufacture of paint. So, you know, casein, again, it's, it's not as soluble as whey, but, you know, if you get a good quality casein, they do sell standalone casein supplements. Uh, you know, I don't think you'll have any real problem with it. Uh, uh, there's another thing I would mention uh, that... Uh, 
there's a little bit of a controversy. I, I mentioned this in a, in a past video when I discussed milk protein. It has to do with uh, certain f fractions of casein. Uh, one of them is called the, uh, the A1 and the A2 fraction. Uh, the, uh, according to some people, the A1 fraction of casein can cause digestive upset and, and uh, problems with, uh, with absorption in some people. So as a consequence, uh, they, uh, they now have a what they call an A2-specific milk. Uh, it's just called A2 milk. In fact, there's a A2 milk corporation out of New Zealand that sells this stuff around the world. It's even in supermarkets in the United States. Uh, now the truth of the matter is that, uh, I mean, you could try this milk and see if you do have problems with uh, casein as far as digestive absorption. You can try the A2 milk, but I have to tell you there's been about four good solid reviews that looked at this issue and found that it's basically bogus, that you know the, the problems attributed to the A1, uh, let's say, fraction of casein don't really exist. In other words, it's basically uh, hyperbole. Uh, so, you know, the, the A2 milk is considerably more expensive than regular milk, so I'd warn you about that too. So, uh, what's the best way to use casein? I would suggest casein is best used to take advantage of its slow release properties. Uh, let's say that you want to use a protein supplement, but you don't want to take it several times a day, like whey only lasts 90 minutes. So if you're using a whey and, and that's your main source of protein, you'd have to ingest several servings a day. Now, if you, if you use a casein supplement, because of the slow release of, of amino acids, you would need far less servings of, of uh, casein. So, you know, instead of having four servings of whey, you'd only need one or two servings of casein to get about the same benefit. And, of course, the second main reason to use casein is that nighttime effect, which I think without a doubt is real, meaning that if you take casein, let's say you work out at night, uh, and it doesn't have to be right before you go to sleep, as long as it's within a couple hours proximity of sleep. If you take casein before you go to sleep, it'll provide definite anabolic effects. It'll increase muscle protein synthesis, and it, it actually will stimulate muscle gains. So that's, uh, that's the advantages of casein. Uh, uh, I think that, that about covers it. Uh, if you want more information on nutrition, exercise science, ergogenic aids, hormonal therapy, uh, fat loss techniques that work, anti-aging research, subscribe today to my Applied Metabolics newsletter, best source of information on the Internet, better than any blog, better than any, uh, any information you'll find on the Internet. It combines my 56 years of constant study and practical experience. It's all in the newsletter. You will learn a lot no matter how much knowledge you think you already have. I guarantee you will learn something from reading my, my monthly Applied Metabolics newsletter. It's 40 to 50 pages, no advertisements, pure, unadulterated, evidence-based information. Again, subscribe today, www.appliedmetabolics.com. I do have an email portal on the Applied Metabolics site. I will respond to questions from subscribers, but not unsolicited questions. I also don't, uh, I also don't respond to unsolicited questions in the comment section under these videos. Uh, uh, my, my loyalty, or if you want to call it, uh, is to my subscribers who support my work. So I will answer their questions. If you're not a subscriber and you want to, uh, you want me to answer your questions, I do offer consultations, but those, are, of course, come with a fee. I don't, I, I don't have time to just answer every question thrown at me. Uh, you know, I don't know of anyone who has any knowledge in the world that does that either. So it's not just me. So that's about it. Uh, if you want, you 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 saw my friend Bruno, Bruno the bodyguard, at the beginning of this video. Uh, I don't know what I do without Bruno. I'll tell you, he's a uh, He's a great little pal, you know. Uh, if you want to have the best friend you'll ever have, go to your local shelter, adopt a dog. Honestly, I, I wish I could I could adopt every dog in every shelter in the world. I love them that much. They're great. So take care.